Your electronic devices, like your TV, computer, or phone, may seem to produce millions of colors, but they actually only use three primary colors, red, green, and blue. By combining these three colors, your screen tricks your brain into perceiving new colors. This design is tailored for human perception, as dogs can only see two colors, while pigeons can detect five colors, including ultraviolet. Similarly, you have the power to create new perceptions in a human brain without physically creating anything in real life. This process, known as intervention, is based on scientific principles, not scammy psychological tricks. Rory Sutherland, author of the book Alchemy, explains intervention as a way to create new experiences within the mind, rather than in the physical world. In this video, we will share six fascinating insights from Sutherland's book. Takeaway number one, perception is reality. In 2009, Eurostar, a train company, faced the loss of customers to airlines. They sought to improve the journey from London to Paris, and engineers proposed a solution that involved building new train tracks at a cost of over $8 billion. This reduced travel time by 40 minutes, from 3 hours 20 minutes to 2 hours 40 minutes. However, a psychological approach to solving the problem would involve shifting focus from the quantity of time to the quality of time. They could have enhanced the overall experience instead, such as by installing Wi-Fi on the trains at a fraction of the cost, which they eventually did, but 10 years later, or by spending just $1 billion to hire attractive supermodels to serve free champagne throughout the journey. While this may sound unconventional, it could have been a much cheaper solution, generating a desire for the train to slow down. Our perception of time varies based on the activities we engage in during that time. We've all experienced instances where five minutes felt like an eternity, or where an hour flew by unnoticed. Consider applying this understanding to your business or job. For instance, you could redesign your office's waiting room to provide enjoyable activities for customers, helping them forget about the waiting period. Another aspect of time is our aversion to waiting in uncertainty. The perception of time can be reduced not by actually decreasing it, but by minimizing the uncertainty surrounding it. Take the example of Uber versus taxis. You may feel that Uber arrives faster than a taxi. But Uber didn't necessarily reduce the time it takes for the car to reach you. Instead, they reduced the uncertainty of how long you have to wait by providing a map showing the driver's location and an estimated arrival time. This sense of control and reduced anxiety makes waiting for 10 minutes with a known wait time more tolerable than waiting for 5 minutes in a state of uncertainty. Humans despise uncertainty. So if you can find ways to minimize it, you have a valuable product or service in your hands. By approaching problems from a psychological perspective rather than a purely logical one, you can discover alternative solutions that may be better and cost less. For instance, in the UK, purchasing a Ferrari entitles you to free delivery to your local dealership, which is great. However, there's another option called the Factory Tour. For a fee of £500, you can visit the Ferrari factory at your own expense. At the end of the tour, you get to drive your brand new Ferrari off the factory lot and take it home. The reality remains the same, but by framing it as a factory tour, Ferrari gets the customers to pay £500 and collect their own car. In the car industry, Rolls-Royce made their cars appear cheaper by changing the context in which they were exhibited. Instead of showing them at a regular car shows where they seemed exorbitantly expensive compared to other cars, they began exhibiting them at yacht and plane shows. After spending the afternoon looking at airplanes and boats, a $250,000 car suddenly appears relatively inexpensive. By understanding the psychological aspects of perception and context, you can reshape experiences and offerings to provide greater value at a lower cost. Here's one final example. Many businesses fail not because their product is inferior, 
but because they struggle with selling it effectively. The English Royal Mail serves as a prime illustration. It provides a very good service with a 97% success rate for delivering first class letters and mail overnight in the UK. However, the company aimed to further improve and reach a 98.5% success rate, which ended up imposing significant costs and straining the system. Interestingly, when people were asked what percentage of first class mail arrives the next day, their answers ranged from 40 to 80%. No one mentioned the actual figure of 97%. This highlights that the issues lies in perception rather than the service itself. If perception is worse than reality, it's more logical to focus on improving perception rather than solely focusing on enhancing the product. The Royal Mail could have simply advertised and communicated the quality of their service. It doesn't make sense to prioritize the product and overlook marketing efforts. People not only need a great product, but also need to believe that they are receiving a great product. Perception plays a crucial role in shaping customer satisfaction and success in the market. Takeaway number two. Small interventions can have a significant impact. We often assume that complex problems require equally complex solutions, but in reality, small and seemingly trivial interventions can yield substantial results. For instance, instead of investing a significant amount of money to make elevators faster, simply installing mirrors can make a notable difference. Mirrors can provide a distraction, preventing boredom during the ride, and thus making the journey feel quicker. Another example pertains to doctors and patients who tend to abandon antibiotic treatment as soon as their symptoms subside. The rational solution might involve explaining the dangers of such behavior by educating them on how bacteria can become stronger. However, a simpler alternative exists. Instead of giving patients 24 white pills, they can be giving 18 white pills and 6 blue pills, instructing them to take the white pills first and then the blue ones. By breaking the treatment into two stages, people perceive it as a process with a milestone in the middle, increasing the likelihood of completing the full course. Ready to dive into captivating content? Like and subscribe to our channel now. Stay updated with our latest videos, valuable insights, entertaining stories, and helpful tips. Join our growing community of knowledge seekers today hit that like button and subscribe to embark on an exciting journey of learning and discovery. Don't miss out. Join us now. Takeaway number three. The opposite of a good idea can still be a good idea. In the realm of science, there are clear distinctions between right and wrong answers. However, in psychology and marketing, the opposite of a good idea can still be a good idea. Let's consider an example. When you visit a restaurant, you expect polite and welcoming treatment. The opposite of polite behavior is rude behavior, and some restaurants have actually incorporated rudeness into their service. At these establishments, wait staff might throw the food in front of you and speak rudely. Surprisingly, when rudeness becomes part of the cultural experience and people anticipate being treated poorly, it can become an enjoyable and entertaining experience that people are willing to pay for. Another example is Red Bull. It is the opposite of Coca-Cola in terms of taste, packaging and pricing. Red Bull's unique taste, small can size and higher price point would be laughed at if someone proposed them as a marketing strategy. Yet, Red Bull has defied expectations and become a successful brand. This takeaway highlights that going against conventional wisdom and embracing ideas that seem counterintuitive can sometimes yield positive outcomes in psychology and marketing. Takeaway number four, ask stupid questions because nobody else will. Sometimes, the solution to a problem lies in asking what may appear to be a stupid question. These are the questions that everyone assumes they already know the answer to. However, posing unconventional or seemingly silly questions can lead to breakthrough insights and innovative solutions. Most people refrain from asking stupid questions because they don't want to appear foolish.
However, these questions can help uncover powerful insights. Creating a small space within your business to explore unconventional ideas can be an extraordinary competitive advantage. By experimenting outside the realm of logic, where most of your competitors fear to venture, you open the door to discovering novel solutions and gaining a unique edge. Takeaway number five. People don't see the world objectively. When faced with a choice of creating an advertisement for a car, you have two options. Option A showcases the car's features like its exterior beauty, spaciousness, powerful engine, and comfortable seats. Option B, on the other hand, depicts the car racing alongside a majestic animal like a lion in the African savanna. If you believe option B will be more successful, you're likely right. The reason behind this is simpler than it may seem, the inclusion of an animal. Studies have shown that advertisements featuring beautiful or fluffy animals tend to outperform those without them, regardless of the product being promoted. But if I'm purchasing a car, shouldn't factors like comfort, power and space be my primary considerations? Then why am I allowing myself to be swayed by the presence of that cute big cat rather than the car's objective features? The answer lies in our unconscious minds. We often do things for reasons that we consciously know nothing about. If you were to ask someone why they are making a certain choice, they would likely provide you with a reason. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the true underlying reason. Henry Ford, the founder of Ford Car Company, once famously remarked, If I asked people what they wanted, they would say a faster horse. We tend to assume that people perceive the world objectively, thinking logically and seeing things clearly all the time. But the truth is, we don't see the world as it is. We see the world through the lens of what it means to us. Subjective experiences hold value and can be just as influential as objective data when it comes to decision making. Whether you own a business or hold a leadership role, it's essential to bear this in mind. Even outside of a business context, as you navigate problem solving in relationships with partners, co-workers and friends, thinking in psychological terms can help you remember that what people say isn't always what they mean. Their words don't always align with their true feelings or intentions. Recognizing this psychological aspect can be invaluable in understanding and effectively engaging with others. Takeaway number six, it doesn't pay to be logical if everybody else is being logical. Military strategy holds an intriguing lesson, one that often doesn't make a lot of sense on the surface. While there is a clear goal and steps to reach it, there are also intentional diversions along the way. This is because acting logically and predictably would make the military's move easily detectable by the enemy. The same principle applies to business. Following a predictable path leads to quick obsolescence as you become indistinguishable from your competitors. To truly succeed, it is crucial to think differently, creatively and innovatively. Instead of copying your competitors because their strategies seem to work, focus on identifying their flaws and shortcomings. Exploit those weaknesses to your advantage developing a unique selling point that sets you apart. For instance, if you plan to write a book, read the one and two star reviews of similar books to uncover their weaknesses. In conclusion, the author suggests that many future solutions will likely emerge from psychology rather than pure logic and rationale. In today's world, most problems with logical solutions have already been solved. The remaining challenges are likely logic-proof, meaning they cannot be solved through traditional logic alone, otherwise we would have already found the solutions. We genuinely appreciate you spending time on this channel. If you found this video valuable, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you never miss out on future content that can help you on your journey of personal growth. Thank you for your support and I wish you a wonderful day ahead.